Welcome back to the SOSPA Safety Roundtable podcast. I'm Stacey Godbold, your host, and I've got two really exciting guests today that I'm really looking forward to. Um, Peter and Mike, would you guys introduce yourself? You want to start, Peter? Sure. Uh, Peter Hopi, uh, my business is Partners in Business Excellence. I work with all types of business, um, primarily helping them improve the processes by doing training, training on uh, lean manufacturing, uh, teaching them all different tools and techniques, and then helping them actually implement change within their organization. Thank you. And my name is Michael Crouch. Um, I work for Proby USA. I'm our senior environmental health and safety coordinator. Uh, Proby USA is a um, probiotic manufacturing company. That's uh, we're a third party probiotic manufacturing company based out of Colorado and Redmond, Washington. Great. Thank you guys so much. So, um, lean manufacturing, Peter, you are the guru of lean manufacturing. I will just name you that way. Um, how did you and Mike meet? Uh, so that's, that's a great question. Uh, actually through an organization that, uh, I think his boss, um, Nicole, uh, she was, uh, at a women in manufacturing event, I think. And, uh, we got to talking about lean manufacturing. And um, they, she said that they had an opportunity where they're looking to maybe learn more about what you know lean manufacturing was and how it can be implemented. And you know we were able to find some state, Colorado State grant funding that uh, helped uh, pave the way for me to work with them. And so I worked with them last year. Uh, I think starting maybe in around September, um, maybe it was two years ago, year and a half ago, maybe um, it was a while ago, I guess. And um, we just did a bunch of different classes together. Uh, Mike was actually in many, I think, if not most of the classes. And uh, we did a lot of stuff within uh, their facility and within the organization that I think they'd really benefit from. So when I think of lean manufacturing, um, I think of more in the operation or risk management, or not risk management necessarily, but the operational role. And really what we're f- focusing on today is lean manufacturing and how it works with the safety department. Um, do you find that pretty common that you're talking a lot with the, the operations person? Yeah, typically when uh, I engage with a company, uh, it's usually from an operations side, um, you know, but we tend to work with all aspects of the business, whether it's, you know, purchasing, uh, it could be even counting, even on the sales side, I think we've done a lot of work with them as well. Um, but it tends to be mostly primarily focused on the operations side. So how do you typically work with the safety department? What does that look like? So uh, a lot of times uh, the safety department is actually involved in uh, you know the training and the implementation that we're doing. And everything that we do, uh, the first and foremost has to be to focus on improving safety. Uh, a lot of times, sometimes, well, yeah, sometimes it's as simple as just reorganizing an area to mitigate any safety opportunities or safety issues that might be there. Okay. Um, so if somebody's standing around, you know, I mean, is, is, are there some misunderstandings about what lean manufacturing really is and what it means and what it stands for? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've heard it called the flavor flavor of the month. Uh, I've heard where people just do it and then they expect uh, brilliance. Uh, in a lot of cases, it's actually a change in culture. It's a change in the way that people think about how they do their jobs. And they're actually focused more on a, um, you know, looking at it from the aspect of how do I make my job less frustrating by identifying eliminating what we call waste. And a lot of those wastes uh, revolve around just being inefficient in our job. And, you know, many that can result in, you know, safety uh, issues or even safety improvements. So. so, Mike, when you heard of lean manufacturing, this guy named Peter coming around, what did you immediately think that lean manufacturing was? I wasn't really sure, to be honest. Um, I, I kind of got into it uh, just for the knowledge of, of helping out the, the, the company. Um, and then it, we, when I first, took that first um, class with Peter. I believe the first one was, I think it was the first one was lean manufacturing or Kanban. Um, And I really seen how this can really work into the safety department by the organization part of it, particularly 
um, can greatly reduce um, risk, the, the risk, risk mitigation. So when I hear you say, uh, Peter, um, that it's eliminating waste, because, you know, when I read a lot about lean manufacturing, that is the top um, item that comes up quite a bit, eliminating waste. Um, I, I think of physical waste. Is, is that true? Um, no, it's um, lean manufacturing can, uh, talks about eight different ways uh, from, you know, defects to overproduction. Uh, waiting, uh, non-utilized uh, uh, talent, uh, transportation, moving things around when you need to, inventory, uh, motion, moving the human body more than you need to, and then, um, you know, excess processing. Um, you know, one of the examples uh, working with Mike, you know, that came out of the whole program was that, uh, you know, one of the things that Mike is responsible for is they have these uh, safety cabinets where, you know, you can go get things like band-aids and stuff like that. And, you know, when I talked to Mike, you know, very frustrating for him is a lot of waste, just waste of his time, is that they would just run out of stuff in there. And through some of the education, you know, we went through, we actually put together kind of a, what we call a Kanban system, where there is a process now that when it gets low, there's a card that they basically put in a slot that he just goes and looks for these cards, and it just indicates that it needs to be restocked. And, you know, again, Mike can kind of expand on it, but you know, from what I got, it just made his job much, much easier. And, you know, just made, we put a process in place that's simple to be followed, that people are now following, that makes everybody's job much easier. So. Do you have anything on that, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like Peter said, uh, every month I would spend about a half hour at each one of our first aid cabinets, going over a checklist and making sure that every single piece was where it's supposed to be and um, that we had enough supply of it, where a lot of times it would just be one or two items that I would be constantly filling up. But you know, per our procedure, I had to go over this checklist. So it, it, that's a half hour at each one of our first aid stations. We have six throughout our facilities. Um, so that's you know almost two hours just checking on first aid stations. Um, so this combine that we created, now the employees, when once we get low of band-aids, there's a little Kanban sticker that they pull out and they put it in a sleeve that notifies me, hey, we need more band-aids. So rather than me having to check these every month now, I, I just do a walkthrough every day around the facilities. As I'm doing the walkthroughs, I'm looking at these um, first aid stations and the Kanban sleeves. Now I know, oh, I need to get more band-aids or I need more you know, triple bi antibiotic ointment. And things like that. So it's greatly reduced my time um, in spending on that. So I bet you have just other things that you would rather do yeah. in that yeah. time. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, just yeah, I'm constantly doing um, uh, you know audits throughout the facilities, um, making sure we all of our um, PPE is stocked and in the right places, doing um, respirator fit tests making sure, you know, we, 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 have, we have all the proper equipment that we need on the facilities. So Peter, how else does lean manufacturing and safety work together? So a lot of times, uh, you know, I think um, from a safety perspective, it's always what slips, trips, and falls are the most common. Um, you know, when, uh, when we look at a work area, uh, you know, one of the key things is being organized. Uh, basically make sure that everything has a place and everything's in its place and then getting rid of stuff that we just don't need uh, in the area. And, you know, when we focus on that, we start to identify, you know, where's something like a machine is leaking oil, where there's potential, you know, uh, slip hazard. Uh, if, you know, if we have cables running where they shouldn't be, you know, for trip hazards. So, you know, when we're looking at, we're looking at it from, again, the efficiency side of things, but there's also that very high focus on, you know, from the safety aspect. So a big part of it is, you know, organizing it, uh, you know, making it so it works best for people from the efficiency side of things, but also make sure that there's no safety issues there as well. Is lean manufacturing, um, so I know we talked about a little bit before, it kind of bleeds into a lot of different um, areas of the, of the business of the company. Right. 
Um, and who usually contacts you first? Um, it, it varies. Uh, sometimes it's uh, the person in the corner office, a general manager, an owner, the CEO. Uh, sometimes it's a middle manager that uh, is familiar with Lean, uh, and they somehow or another reach out and find me, and they have their own personal goals or their own goals through the organization where they have to, you know, improve productivity or, uh, you know, um, reduce, uh, uh, you know, defects or whatever else. And so the middle managers are tending to using use me to improve things achieve their their business goals versus the CEO is looking at it from the aspect of they know their business needs to change and they just need somebody like me to be a change agent to come in and help them, you know, uh, change or make those changes within organization. Sure. I mean, everybody has their own different um, lens, right? You have the C-suite right. that their, their lens is more product productivity and that profit, which is exactly where they're supposed to be. That's, that's their seat, right? And then you've right. got more of an operational person that is looking at processes and, um, and also profit for that C-suite. Um, but then that safety person, um, you know, it's processes, but probably saving time. I don't know. Like what, what would you think that is that? Well, so uh, part of lean manufacturing um, is eliminating that downtime. And uh, what, what I found in, in um, manufacturing is a lot of times we're rushing to get stuff done on time. Right. And when we're rushing, we wind up skipping processes that are in place to for employee safety. Um, so by eliminating that downtime, we don't have that waste of, you know, so we're, now we're not rushing to get that final product out the door because we've figured that through through lean manufacturing. Um, well, another thing that Peter helped us with was uh, 5Sing, um, which is part of that um, organizational part of it, which our company has almost fully 5 s our entire company um, since the time that Peter worked with us into, it looks like a completely different company out on the production floors. Um, you know, everything's got a certain place for it. It stops that waste of going to find things. But and from a safety perspective, it also keeps those floors clear for proper egress in case of emergencies. Um, keeping thing, keeping um, pallets in, out of in front of door doorways where employees have to go back and forth. Um, now we have clear clear pathways that you know we keep clear at all times for in case of emergencies. Do you know off the top of your head what those five S's are? I just, come on, come on. I like, oh. I'll buy you coffee. <laughs> get them all. I just want to know. So I know standardize, shine, sort. I, I'm not, I know I'm not saying them in the proper order. Uh, <laughs> this is so fun. I can't remember the last two. There's, yeah, it's like, there's no way, but I just want to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm part of the 5S committee. I, had, I, had one place, so I should know these. Yeah. <laughs> I do it. It's okay. There's no, yeah, there's, it's, yeah, it's good. And, and, and I, I don't want to air Proby's uh, dirty laundry, but, you know, when we were working with them, one of the projects we had was they have this huge conics box on the side of the building. And it was literally the dumping ground where, yeah, everything just went to die where, you know, people just had no idea, you know, what was even in that box. And, um, you know, we went through it and, you know, when we talked to the people that would get in there, you know, they talked about they had to move, you know, it was like old piece of equipment and just stuff that people just didn't know what to do with, you know, we just hit it there. And so, um, you know, when they actually needed something in there, routinely, they'd have to pull half of the box out to get to the stuff that they needed. And so, you know, we spent a better part of, I don't know if it was two days going through that. And actually we found a lot of stuff that we, you know, could get rid of. I know that they sold some, you know, old equipment to some other, you know, people. And that thing's got, you know, probably half of what it had in it before. And now it's much better organized with the stuff that they're going to use in the front and the stuff that they're probably not going to use more in the back. And so now, again, from the safety aspect, if I don't have to move 10 things to get this, the one thing I need, you know, the potential for you know, me injuring myself by moving equipment, you know, that shouldn't be moved in the first place, you know, it, it was greatly reduced. And so, you know, that was a fun project. And, you know, for me, every business has got that one place where there's, you know, it's a room or it's a place in the business somewhere in the corner where they just dump stuff. And I love getting into there because we find all kinds of fun stuff. 
Um, one company I worked with, we actually found a full working forklift buried under a bunch of stuff <laughs> in the back of the facility that they'd been looking for for like a few months. So it's, it's back there and people just start putting stuff on it. And so, you know, when you have those things where they're just precariously stacked on top of, you know, each other or wherever else, just getting rid of those areas and going through them just makes it so much easier. Uh, plus, again, that from a safety aspect is much better as well. Okay, so as we wrap up here, I think it's important to discuss the do's and the don'ts of lean manufacturing with the safety lens. So in with for you two, what are the three do's and the three don'ts of lean manufacturing with the lens of safety? But let's start with the do's. What about you, Peter? Um, you know, it's incorporating lean manufacturing is not just a one and done kind of a thing. It's actually it's a change in culture, it's a change in business, and it's a change. In the way that you do business and it needs to be a part of you you know what you do every single day so um you know you have to embrace it and you have to incorporate it into you know everything within the business i uh, just to kind of talk about that um one of one of the things that we've done through peter's teachings um that probably to change that culture is now once a quarter we shut down the entire facilities uh, for between one to two hours to work on 5S and other continuous improvement projects um, to really get that culture just seeped into all aspects of it. Okay, so number two are those 5Ss. Yeah, absolutely. One of the big events that we just recently did, um, going back to what Peter was talking about, about the Connex, we actually picked up a second Connex, so we 5S that one. Um, so we we just took everything out of that Connex, the one Connex, the big stuff, put it in that one that's never going to be used. Um, while the rest of the company was bypassing, you know, where, where do trash cans go? Where does this machine go when we have to move it? Where is it going to go back to? Um, making it really easy. I'm going to need somebody to name these five S's for me. <laughs> Peter can do it. <laughs> Um, you sort through everything, um, you shine everything or clean everything, uh, you set everything uh, in order by giving everything a place, um, and then uh, you standardize, you put standards in place so that you can maintain the first three S's, and then last S is sustaining it, keeping everything, you know, uh, going, so. Woo! All right. <laughs> So five S's is number uh, two for the dues. Um, the third one is uh, leadership. Yeah, it, it has to be, um, you know, the incorporation or uh, you know, implementation of lean manufacturing. Uh, it has to be embraced by the leadership, but it also has to be supported by leadership as well. Uh, it's not just something where, you know, we just do it and we're, we're good. Leadership's got to be a part of it and they have to show support uh, for, you know, the, the activities that are taking place. Absolutely. Our, our, one great thing about Probe USA again is our director of operations uh, is a strong focal point and a push to get all the, make sure that all this stuff um, does go into place. Um, it, she gets the management team on board to let the employees really embrace these changes and really come up with these changes themselves. I really like that. You know, it seems like an uphill battle when, when the, the leadership team is on board and you're really passionate about it. And it's something that you've got to push or sell up uphill. It seems like a challenge. Yep. All right. So the three don'ts of lean manufacturing, who wants to go first? Um, you know, for me, uh, no hidden agendas. Uh, I, I'm actually through my experience, I'm pretty good figuring out when, you know, like an operations manager brought me in to incorporate his ideas of what should or shouldn't be done. Uh, it really needs to be, again, uh, embraced by everybody, but the ideas should come from, uh, you know, those who are doing the job themselves. So, no hidden agendas. Okay, what about you, Mike? Another Oops. don't. I'd say don't lead from the top. Um, and with, with all these projects, always let the employees tell their ideas of improving. They're the ones that are on the floor. They're the ones that are, you know, working with this product on a daily basis in there. Let them tell you what, how they can improve the aspect of the company through lean manufacturing. I really like that empowering people. I mean, they're the ones that are boots on the ground, literally, um, and have really the eyes and the ears of the company. 
you know, who knows better than them. Absolutely. Okay. What's last don't of lean manufacturing in the terms? You know, um, you know, it says lean manufacturing, but uh, lean manufacturing can be incorporated in any business and any aspect of the business. It's not just for manufacturing. Um, you know, don't think that, you know, because it says lean manufacturing, it can only be applied to manufacturing uh, businesses and or environments. Uh, I've successfully incorporated it and, in, you know, just by any business from government to service industry to, uh, you know, you name it, uh, I've worked in it uh, from every aspect of the front office, you know, accounting, sales, uh, purchasing, uh, even, you know, warehouse, wherever. It's not just for manufacturing. I like it. This is really good. I, you know, I appreciate both of your time. I think it's been really helpful to give people everyone an understanding of what it is and what it's not, and then, you know, how to proceed through it. So, um, really great. I really appreciate your time. Um, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, for me, uh, it's, you know, pretty simple. Go to my website, uh, P B E X L L C.com. And, uh, it has, uh, uh, you know, list of all the different classes I teach and there's a contact us page and uh, you can learn a little bit more about lean manufacturing and, you know, what we do with our businesses. So, And, you know, I know that, Peter, you are the guru of lean manufacturing, but a lot of people, what they want to do is talk to somebody that's gone through it and has walked the walk. Um, so, Mike, um, I think it's always fun to talk to somebody that's like, like I said, gone through it, understands it, and they can, you know, um, you could speak to the experience of it. So, um, how do they get a hold of you? So, uh, you can reach reach me at michael.crouch. That's M I C H A E L dot P R A U T Z S C H at proby.com. And I'd be happy to, uh, you know, share my experiences at any time. Peter's awesome. a great coach for that stuff. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what? I appreciate your both of your time and um, look forward to talking to you again.